So I just got an email, Bernie, from this girl, Allison Josephs. She was in studio last year. Nice girl. Jew in the city. You remember her? Uh, of course. She was great, yes. She was great. She says, uh, Sid, it's such a Shonda. That means privacy for you folks out there. Such a Shonda. Only a few rabbis are anti-vax and 99% are pro-vax. This is causing some serious anti-Semitism. Can I please come on? So I invited her in studio tomorrow. How about that? I think it's perfect. Apropos. Right? She'd be a great timely guest. Let's get her in. Uh, uh, as far as the anti-Semitism, we'll talk to her about it. Yeah. Allison Joseph, Jew in the City. Jill, she'll come in tomorrow. Oh, yeah. She's been in before. I love her. She's great. She's yeah. going to come in tomorrow and talk about this because she's saying the overwhelming majority are pro-vaccinations. Because they're smart. But the media it, is it, making it, it sound like it's the other way around. I believe that. It's not really a religious thing. No. It, it's not at all. Not in the Torah. No. But it's uh, some some of these Orthodox Jews are very adamant about the anti-vaxxing thing. But, it, but it's not a, a no. orthodoxy. No, it's not. You're 100% right. Anyway, once I find out the Islanders are going to be in the playoffs and back on Long Island, sure, he's a great guest talking about Donald Trump. He's a great guest talking about Homeland Security. He's a great guest talking about taxes and MS-13 on Long Island. But I know that in his heart of hearts, he was one of the first guys to sign the lease when the Islanders first dropped the puck at North Nassau Coliseum and to have the Isles back playing playoff hockey on the island later on tonight has to make this guy so happy. Maybe it's the happiest he's ever been since being reelected. It's our dear friend, our favorite congressman, Peter King. Huge night tonight, Mr. It, King. It sure is. Sid, it sure is. Uh, <laughs> Bernie, this is great. I mean, this yeah. is, after all these years, the Islanders are back in it. They're playing the home game at the Coliseum where they belonged all along. They never belonged in Barclays, and it was really a tragedy that the Nassau taxpayers voted this down several years ago, uh, you know, to expand the Coliseum. They're great. It's not, you're right. I go back to 1971, 72. I just started working in the Nassau County Attorney's Office, and they assigned me to work with the Islanders on preparing the lease. And at that time, you know, the Nets were playing in the Coliseum. They'd already gotten into the Coliseum. I think Julius Serving was there, right, Peter? Uh, Irving came a year later. Okay. Uh, th- uh, that year, they had Rick Barry, uh, oh, yeah. Conoseco was the coach. Oof. And uh, wow. so in any event, they were hoping, Roy Bow was the uh, owner of the Islanders, he was hoping that the Islanders would ever do half as well as the Nets at the box office. They really didn't know how long Island would take to hockey because it was a ranger town in the city. Uh, lacrosse and other sports were big in the suburbs. But the Islanders from day one, I mean, they guys like Eddie Westfall and Billy Smith, Chico Resch, all of them. And within, I guess, three years, they were in the playoffs. Uh, then they, of course, won the four Stanley Cups in a row from 80 to 83. They made the finals in 84. And since then, it's been tough. But uh, I tell you, with uh, Lamorello and with Trotz, they really uh, got them back. And nobody yeah. expected the Islanders to make this kind of move this year. And the irony is, you know, they lost Tavares to the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, that's right. We, we thought it was over. They finished, then they finished three points out of the Leafs. In the <laughs> so, so there you go. No, it should be great. I mean, I don't follow it as closely as I used to, only because I'm down here in Washington a lot. But, I mean, the goalies, the defense has been great. I mean, they went from being one of the worst in the NHL to one of the best. And also, when you can't, you know, you can go through all the different offense, defense, special teams, and all that. But you can't put a, uh, you can't quantify what it means to have all those crazy fans screaming and yelling at the Coliseum tonight. I mean, they're going to blow the roof off. So over. true. Tonight and Friday, uh, it's going to be terrific. Uh, Congressman Peter King, a great statesman, a great Long Islander. And he's very excited. You can tell one more thing in this and we'll get to the serious stuff. So they do belong at the Coliseum. They don't belong in Brooklyn. By the way, the sites for a hockey game are terrible at Barclays. Yeah. But the new one they're building, Peter, uh, Peter King, in the, by Belmont, uh, you excited about that for the Islanders? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it keeps it in Long Island, it keeps it in Nassau, it's a good hub location, to me it's a good spot, uh, and I, I hope they find a way to get it done, if they get a Long Island Railroad stop there, that would be make it better, make it more uh, uh, accessible, more available, you know, you can't put a dollar value on what it means to have a major league franchise in your community. I mean, every time a game will be televised, it'll say from Nassau County or Long Island, yep. you know, the New York Islanders, you can't. Otherwise, you're a minor league town. I mean, people today look at you. If you don't have a major league team, you're not a major league area. And Long Island is major league, but if we can get the Islanders in there into Belmont, it'll be a great, great thing. It's uh, we got to do it. We lost them once before. 
If we lose it again, it's no one's fault but our own. Right. Well said, Congressman Peter King. And now on to uh, some serious subjects. Not that that's not serious. It is indeed. Uh, Congressman King, the Mueller report came out. No evidence, of course, of Trump-Russia collusion. Turns out the Russian collusion, the collusion with Ukrainians, and the election meddling was done by the Democrats and some dirty federal cops. Are we going to get a special process, a special counsel for that to look into that stuff? And will Adam Schiff, uh, a.k.a. Adam Bullshiff, Will he have to resign? And uh, no, he won't resign because he's uh, shameless, and the uh, Democrats are going to stick by him. And maybe politically, it's better to have him there because people will see that here's a guy who, for two years, he had all this information on collusion. It was there. He had it. He had it. Then it turns out there's none. Uh, so to me, it's like blown up in his face. But uh, as far as the special counsel, I don't know if we need a special counsel. I have a lot of faith in Barr, and Barr has said yesterday he's going to. Uh, begin investigating how this investigation began in the first place. That is long overdue. And uh, I think all of the aspects of this, as far as the collusion, as far as the Democrats' involvement, whether it was Ukraine, whether it was with the uh, uh, Steele report, the Steele dossier, that was all done between the Russians and the Clinton campaign. So I have faith that Barr is going to do an honest job on this. He's no political guy, but he's a straight arrow, and that's what we need here. Excuse me, Congressman Peter King on the Bernie and Sid show. Now, Peter, you spent a lot of years doing a terrific job, great job with Homeland Security. Now, obviously, the, the president is very, very upset. Too many migrants continue to cross the border. It's become, uh, somebody described it as a Category 5. It's that bad. Uh, but I still feel like Nilsson was a bit of a scapegoat. You know, she was pretty much forced to resign. I think today is her last day. I mean, the enemy of the Democrats, we know that already. They're not going to help. It doesn't matter whether Nielsen's in charge or you're in charge. So for me, I feel like she was a bit of a scapegoat. What about that? I'm inclined to agree. Uh, I mean, I had a, uh, not a great relationship, but I had, I had no problem with it. I dealt with it. Uh, she was very competent. And the thing is, I think the president is very frustrated at what's happening, and he's, in a way, taking it out on Kirsten Nielsen. I think there was never a real bond between the two of them. Uh, there's sort of a loss of confidence early on. But, uh, no, it's, it's, listen, she did as good as anybody, as well as anyone could do in that job. Until Congress changes the laws, until the court rulings get straightened out, it's going to be very, very difficult to do that job. And the president's doing the best he can, but I think he should realize that, if you keep, I and mean, we have, I think, nine or ten top positions at Homeland Security are out. And one concern I have coming from New York, this department was started because of the 9-11 attacks. And what I'm concerned about is that we're putting all this, first you have all this chaos at the top. There's nine or ten, nine or ten top vacancies at the Homeland Security. And all the emphasis on the border, you know, we could still have Al-Qaeda and ISIS and Islamic terrorists trying to blow up New York, Boston, or Chicago, or Los Angeles, the Port of Houston. I don't want us taking our eye off that at all. I mean, this, the, the main reason for this department is to stop terrorism. I think I, I don't want to lose sight of that. And I think that uh, with the almost not too much emphasis on the border. We've got to make sure we keep an emphasis also on counterterrorism. Well, no doubt about it, but uh, the border is just uh, 100,000 people over that oh, yeah, amount. No, don't, don't get me wrong. Absolutely. So why doesn't Congress, why don't, uh, say you, Congressman Peter King, introduce some legislation, get these people on record uh, as vo voting for or against trying to control the border? I mean, uh, I mean, it just can't continue. It's unsustainable. No, it really is unsustainable, and it is a crisis. There's no doubt it's a national crisis. I'm just saying we have to make sure we can uh, you know, walk and chew gum at the same time and go down both paths at the same time. And as far as uh, getting something through Congress, listen, it was hard enough getting it through when Republicans controlled it. Now the Democrats won't even allow any of this to come to a vote. They are, they are locked in, and that's why actually, you know, Tom Swazi and I, I mean, I support a real hard border. I had the first bill back in 2005. You know, the border security wall was uh, voted on then. And uh, so I'm calling to have these strong barriers along the border. Tom Swazi is signing on with me, or I'm signing on with him. It's mutual. Good. And in return for that, we will do something with the Dreamers. I mean, they, they were bought here. They had no control over being here. And TPS, these are people we invited into the country because of natural disasters. That would be, a, to me, a reasonable concession. Give the Democrats what they want on Dreamers and on TPS, but they have to give us what we need with the border security and that strong barriers along the border, more border patrol, more uh, technology, more drones, 
more yeah. whatever we have to do. The border has to be sealed. And the Democrats write this off as some kind of racism. Yeah. I mean, this is the real, you can't have 100,000 people coming across the border illegally. If they walk across the border with a child, they have to stay, and then they disappear into the shadows. No, you're right, Peter. As, as always, amazing job. Enjoy your Islanders back on the island tonight. Good luck. We thought about you right away. Enjoy the game. We'll talk to you again real soon, okay, buddy. Guys. You were great. You guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you. You're the Thanks. best. Peter King. We'll take a short break. When we get back, one of the most famous actors of our generation, part of the Rat Pack. In fact, the self-anointed president of the Rat Pack. He's got a new movie out with an unbelievable cast. We talked to Martin Sheen's son, Charlie Sheen's brother, Emilio, right after this.